Aries. Now this reading can be for Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Otherwise, let's jump into it. Aries, what's going on for love? Okay, five cards for love. Okay, I do feel like there's some destined changes or a destined connection that's coming in around you. First of all, you had divine intervention in the general and you also have your card here with the sun. So I feel like there's a lot of powerful things happening in terms of love for you, Aries. For a lot of you, something is going to be in the beginning stages because a child represents um, youthfulness, the early stages of a romance or becoming open. All right, something is opening up. A person might be opening up to you more. You might be more receptive to another person. The Sun card can also represent um, self-identity and individuality. So you might be changing as a person as well. Now, the child here can also indicate pregnancy. Um, planned or unplanned. Remember, new additions to the family, pregnancy with the Empress. So for a lot of you, you might be meeting someone who already has children or there could be someone who's wanting children with you um, if that's not the case. And I feel like there's a beautiful new beginning that's coming in around you, um, which is also driven by the chariot. Now, there could also be a cancer. Now, cancer is represented by the moon. And then you've got the sun here in this reading. So there's really a divine feminine and a divine masculine connection that's forming or will be forming in its early stages. The chariot card is a card of greatness. And see how the sphinxes are both equal. Again, black and white, masculine and feminine. See how they're both equal. There really is a quality or a newfound equality that's forming around you where you're both going to be driving something great. Um, I feel for some of you, there might be a few obstacles in terms of communication, which I think you'll be able to work through. Um, but it's going to take time because the nine is a, it's a lot, it's quite a high number. But it's also the nine is the last number for until we enter a new cycle. And you do have that number one, okay, it can represent the number one here with the ace. So I don't know if this is loneliness. Some of you might be feeling a little bit lonely. I don't know if you're plagued by needing to make a decision between two people this month, Aries. That could also be the case because the nine of pentacles is a card of anxiousness, woe, worry. It could be connected with this... Um, this too. It could also be with the nine and an air sign, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius, who's feeling very disconnected or, or um, disconnected from you or is missing you. Um, and this is their way of expressing themselves. Um, so I feel like there's someone that wants to be next to you here. Now, the Cancer card is also quite nostalgic. So I'm not sure if some of you have a bit of nostalgia or you might want to revisit the past. I say the past because Cancerians tend to remember a lot. They tend to harbor emotions. They never really forget the people they were attached to, whether it was a good attachment or a bad attachment. They have this ability to revisit emotions and capture these emotions and carry them with them. So it's it's quite it's a it's a very um, admirable trait that they have about them. But the fact that regardless if you're dealing with a cancer or not the fact that that card has come up can symbolize nostalgia so for some of you you might have someone coming back from the past or someone you were once attached to whether platonically romantically legally and this person might be coming back in okay and there's a decision that's going to need to be made because the king of swords needs to make a decision and needs to make it with confidence so for a lot of you aries watching that could be the case um the King of Swords is really about openness. Um, someone's going to open up to you, I feel. You've got two kings here, so they're not open, opening up physically for affection, but also mentally. So they might be revealing these, these vulnerabilities or insecurities. So you might see them. This could be you, of course. It could be an air sign, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. Um, I do feel like there's possibly a work romance happening here for some of you. All these pentacle cards, the page of pentacles represents a fixation on something or someone. So there could be someone that's confessing their love for you. Now, this person could be older or much younger, very experienced or not very experienced. Either way, there's someone that has possibly been keeping an eye out on you. Now, the world card is here, so it can represent things like social media, emails, 
There could be a bit of stalking going on, um, not an unhealthy kind. Well, maybe for some of you, uh, but not an unhealthy kind. I just feel like it's someone you're keeping up at night that's checking in on you. They might be looking at your me uh, social media page. They might be missing you. Um, because the King of Pentacles also represents tradition, there might be someone missing you that you had a tradition with around this time. I don't know if it's like an end of year thing. I don't know if you spent Christmases together or you always did something for New Year's together. Or maybe you just went to the markets or, or something. There's, there's some sort of custom or tradition that you had. And they're growing nostalgic about it. Then again, it could be you two Aries. You might be in that fixated period as well. And it might be keeping you up at night. But the globe here, I feel like this is someone trying to reconnect. And it could be someone who's foreign or someone who now lives apart from you, lives at a distance. I want to say you might be, some of you might be separated from a lover or someone special. Geographical distance might be coming between the two of you. There might be news, okay, about family, news on the job. There's something here that could separate the both of you. So that could also be coming up in regards to love. But that ace could definitely be new beginnings in love, a building attraction, which can ultimately lead to stability and lots of astrological compatibility as well. Let's move on and have a look at your career. Five more cards for career and see how this connects with the general messages. Okay, some of you have some losses coming in in terms of career. Losses and changes, I feel like the Five of Cups can represent sadness, uh, grieving, some sort of project. It could be a collaborative thing. It could be an investment. You know, it might fall through, like a deal might fall through, and you'll have to put it as um, water under a bridge here. There will be second chances in this coll uh, collaboration or project, but it might be in two weeks two months or 20 weeks from now okay it might not be right away um, but there is something that's that's not going to go according to plan so there is losses but don't worry because there's also gains the empress overrides the five so whatever you're losing here you need to lose if it's money or some something that needs to fall through slip through your fingers so to speak the empress will elevate and bring back that growth but there could be some sort of financial losses for some of you or losses of assets, okay, tra um, transmissions of deeds, etc. And you also have the Ten of Swords. Now, the Ten of Swords can often indicate a betrayal or a change, an old way of life dying, shedding of old layers. Now, some of you might have an air sign around you, a Gemini, Libra, Aquarius, and that's not to say the air sign will stab you in the back, but it can. there can be a bit of uncertainty here. Someone who's trying to communicate with you could be a little bit cloudy. The communication might not be very clear and concise. Perhaps if you had the King of Swords come up in this reading, we would um, analogize that to breakthrough in communication. But this shows that there could be setbacks because the Page of Swords isn't very confident in moving forward in a situation. He's hesitant to do so. So someone's hesitant to offer you something or be a part of something in your career. Or there's, if there is communication, it's communication that's sort of beating around the bush. So it's not here, it's not there, it's still sort of up in the air. But there can be an ending for some of you. You might be coming into a bit of a dark place, you might be in a bit of a dark place. It's more to do with communication, so you might feel like you're left you're left out a little bit of about something, Aries. Something that might be happening in the company, changes, something that you weren't informed about. Something that could be hidden from you. So that could be coming up with these two cards. Um, and also the fact that the Four of Swords is here. This is also laying something to rest. So this could, because it symbolized death, loss, and the transition of one phase into another, the Ace, I feel, can point to a new career path for some of you, which may involve finances, assets, the beauty industry, um, working with children, nature, spirituality, tourism, hospitality, finance, travel. It can be a lot of different, you know, retail, it can be a lot of different industries, but I do feel like a new chapter is opening up for a lot of you. Um, someone might be let go, you might be let go, you might be required to let someone go. 
It can be that sort of energy, but it can also be a period of reflection. Some of you might be wanting to try to get your creative juices flowing because the Queen of Cups can represent creativity. So some of you might be meditating or thinking about getting your creative pursuits up and running again, writing books, designing things, art, photography, um, some sort of hobby that you have. Um, but the Queen of Cups can represent creativity and the Holy Grail that she holds here could be some sort of inspired thought or idea that you start on your own. Okay, there can be um, independent ventures that you start on your own. But the Queen of Cups can often represent um, creativity in group environments as well. She holds the Holy Grail, so she's got she's planting a seed here, something that she holds in her hands that's quite um, worthy. There could also be a water sign around you, a Cancer, Pisces, or Scorpio, who might be bringing you the Holy Grail. This person is opening doors for you, Aries. This person is kind, they're empathetic, they're, they've got a, there's, there's something about you that they like. I mean, it could be romantic, but I feel like it's more like they're showing you compassion or kindness. Could be someone above you, could be someone below. Nonetheless, they have an angelic presence to them and angels are intermediaries and messengers. So this is someone that can confide in you or will confide in you. This is someone that wants to be quite honest with you. I don't know if this person knows the same information as this one, but you might see them come forward and, and open up to you more. The Queen of Cups also finds her passion. Okay, she's she's very in tune with her emotions. So some of you are definitely finding your passion, passion in career, and it's going to take you places. The Page of Wands is not very... um. You know, he doesn't just sit there and wait for things to happen. He goes out there and chases them. So I feel for a lot of you, you're chasing something that you're going to make happen in regards to your career. And again, there's money. There's money to be made here, Aries. And all these opportunities that are coming in around you, um, this opportunistic time would be great for making money, um, overcoming debts, laying things to rest, consolidating things, coming out of the darkness because distant lands loom in the horizon here and taking those opportunities, okay, making the most of them. I will leave your reading at that though, Aries. Thank you again for tuning in.